Hallo zusammen. Ich hoffe, ihr könnt mich hören. Wir warten noch eine Minute. Wir sind sehr pünktlich hier bei Smart or German. Und uh, no worries, I will speak English. And uh, maybe you can fill in the little poll that you see and also let me know where you are. Maybe what language level you are, if you know your level. If not, maybe how many years you've been learning German. Just introduce yourself. I always read this. And it's also nice for others to know who is there. Yeah, if there's any issue with hearing me or, um, yeah, leave this in, it's nice. Or uh, seeing me, let me know. Uh, it's very often on your side, then you just restart your setting, your, your meeting. And if more than one, two people say it's an issue, then uh, I will restart the meeting. Yeah, and you just stay where you are. Everything will work automatically. So welcome. Um, it's a pleasure to see you here. Uh, I'm Michael, in case you haven't seen me yet. I'm German. Uh, actually, I'm not sure whether I am, but uh, let's say I'm a German tutor for over 20 years now. Uh, I've stopped teaching one-on-one -on -one because it's not necessary anymore. Uh, that was the last century. This century, people can actually learn all by themselves in the same or better quality than with a tutor, and that is my current profession. Yeah. If you have any questions, you can wait until the end of the seminar. Uh, ideally, you really you can type it already in, but uh, I will not scroll through the whole chat. I will answer the questions at the end. Yeah, so maybe copy and paste them somewhere else first, and later copy them back into the chat. Because if we have to restart the meeting, then um, all the comments get lost. Good. So. One minute past six. Let's get started. Those who come late uh, will have to watch the replay. If you have to go earlier, uh, yeah, you can leave any time. It's a pleasure to have you here, but if you have to go, uh, you should get informed about the replay. Yeah? Yeah, Rio. Uh, if you remind me of the question, and Stuart, congratulations. Herzlichen Glückwunsch. Freut mich sehr. Uh, you've been a member of the Smarter German family for, for a couple of years now, right? You were one of the early birds. If I'm not mistaken, because the name rings a clear bell. Good. So today the topic is language, language exchange partners, uh, which we call Tandem. I will have a little presentation for you. Let me share my screen and then we'll see. I will keep track of your comments on my mobile, so if there's any emergency or anything crucial, I have an eye on it here and there, but should be okay. So screen share, start this application. There we are. So the slides are just to accompany what I say and to remind me of what I want to say. By the way, what you see here on the image is a tandem sprung. It's a jump from 4,000 meters from an airplane. Sometimes it's also less than that. So I found that is a very good illustration of what you're about to encounter with a tandem. I'll explain what a tandem is in a second. You can see this all right. As usual, a presentation might be less than 45 minutes, and in the end, we have questions. So, and the questions don't have to be related to what we do. Okay. Now, those who don't know what a tandem is, I try to put my mobile here. It's basically meeting with another person that is learning your native language or a language that you are actually fluent in and uh, you usually meet for an hour, but we will talk about that later, uh, of which half the time you speak German and the other half, I assume, English, because smarter German is English-German. But if you are lucky and find someone who speaks your native language, in case it's not English, you can also do another language. And this seems so simple, and it seems so logical that this is a good thing to do, because people always feel like they need to speak more, which we can also discuss at one point. 
but uh, there's many, many things that can go wrong. It's also not that easy to really get something like this going, but let's take a look at what helps in the end to make it a success. Huh? The title says it all, just a few thoughts. It's of course not a conclusive list that I will give you now. Um, I think of myself, if I meet with any person, I actually would love to uh, have interesting chats. Yeah, I, I had a friend in the past who had a tandem and, and it was a young lady way younger than him and she was interested in shopping. And that was the last thing on his mind. So uh, it was quite awkward in the end. So they didn't find anything to talk to. So And I had myself certain tandems, but I possibly just was lazy in my choice. I took the first best. Ideally, you like the person you talk to. Yeah. Um, makes things a lot more pleasant. And, of course, depends on your preference, but it should be that you are more or less on the same level in the respective language. Yeah. So, and I would say a tandem makes most sense from level B1 onwards. Before that, it's, it's rather unlikely that you will get a proper conversation going. And uh, beyond B2, I think you will just immerse into daily life with people. You don't need to connect just via the desire to exchange language knowledge or, yeah, like to do this. And uh, of course, ideally, you have someone who has the same motivation, the same availability, is, is somehow, yeah, just available in any sense of the world, uh, word. Yeah, these are just some basics. I go into detail uh, also later. So then there is the question whether you should pay. You could also pay for someone. Uh, I used to recommend that in the early years and I'm still torn about it. I only recommend paying for someone for exam preparation and especially oral exam preparation because anything else it, it doesn't feel right to me uh, after all these years and after also being a conversation partner several times. Um, there's a couple of issues with that, but there's also advantages. So if you pay someone, you don't have to speak their language and therefore you save half the time, right? That's a good thing. And maybe if you pay someone, that person is a professional. You know? And a professional ideally is prepared and FB stands not for Facebook, but for feedback. It gives you professional feedback. What professional feedback is, you can learn in my courses. Uh, it's simply feedback that doesn't take authority away from you, that doesn't tell you how things are, but makes you think, makes you first um, find your own mistakes, yeah, by just raising a hand or intelligently correcting you. Uh, unfortunately, that's not always a given, which is why the question marks are there. Katik is asking for subtitles. Katik, this is a live show. Um, unless you want to type what I say in real time, <laughs> yeah, there will be no subtitles today nor tomorrow in the replay. Then if you pay for it, let's say you get a cheap um, yeah, conversation partner or, or, yeah, it's not a language exchange partner, but let's call them Tandem. Uh, you will at least need 140 hours to get to B1 level, uh, 140 hours of speaking practice. And uh, times 10, that's $1,400. That's a lot of money. And the other thing is, of course, what kind of connection do you establish with a person like that? Yeah, I always compare paying for such things with paying for sex completely fine with me, no problem, can also be enjoyable, at least for one side maybe. Um, but you can't expect to get love out of this. Yeah, actually you shouldn't really. And while you can have a very hearty uh, connection to a conversation trainer or a German tutor, of course, there's still the money between you two. And if you work with someone voluntarily and they invest their time and effort, it's a different thing. Yeah. Buying a beer for one hour is good if, I wouldn't say that's a payment though, yeah? I'm not sure whether I would take that payment. But having a beer is a good starter as well, makes, loosens your tongue. Now, people ask always or often, 
what should we talk about? Uh, it's, a, it's a weird question because in the end, you can really talk about anything. The question is, what are you interested in and what are you capable of talking about? Yeah, depending on your level. And that's why I recommend doing this earliest from B1 level onwards because you need to first have something also physically like words and structures that you can use to communicate. And then there is very few, very few limits, limitations. And of course, if you talk about complex matters, you possibly need a higher command of the language. Now keep that in mind. So keep it real. It might be boring to talk about things you see in a textbook or in a language course, but it might also work for you. You have to see. We, we talk about this later. So I thought, what could I share with you that you don't already know, uh, that I haven't found online yet? Um, that is maybe how would I approach a tandem exchange? And the key to success with many, many things, unless dumb luck, of course, is playing a role, is preparation. The better you're prepared, the better the rest, Yeah, the outcome. The first thing is you should pick a relevant topic that you two actually enjoy talking about. And if it's family for now, it's also okay. It doesn't have to be your heart doesn't have to be faster with every topic, but if you want to meet again and again, you kind of should have a connection that allows you to talk longer, meet more often. And then I would say, okay, let's prepare. Let's prepare 20 questions. If I talk about family, what questions could you imagine? Can you type some? Pardon. I wait for a few questions to type. So let's say you talk about your family. What questions would you ask another person? Or have a chai in the meantime. You can also formulate and share full questions, but brothers, sisters is a good start. <laughs> Come. Vivada and Familia, you can ask in English. Don't have to write German here. It's an English communication thing. You start with English, by the way. I didn't say that. Yeah, 20 questions you would ask in English because first you need to understand what is it I can actually use. The translation comes later. I show that to you. Yeah? Where are you from? All these things. So very basic questions. I took this basic topic, but you can also take anything more complex Anything you could talk about in your native language. Yeah, you don't have to do the preparation in English because in the end you would practice German. And if you have these questions, you would also, of course, think of responses. I say 20, but if you find more, it's fine. If it's less, yeah. Let's say, how many kids do you have? What would be a response? I have 10 kids. I have two kids. I have no kids at all. I don't want kids. Kids are horrible. You can be creative. Be normal. Don't be a school book. Don't be textbook. Yeah? I don't have kids. I hate kids. Beautiful response. Why not write this down? How many boyfriends did you have? Yeah, well, yeah. it matters in different cultures, Katik, but it's possibly a question you don't want to ask a German woman or German gay man uh, on the first date. Yeah, be careful with <laughs> that. So there's a response. Let's say, I hate kids. And if you end it here, it would be like playing chess and everybody makes just one move and end of the game. That doesn't really work. So you have to think of what would be a reaction to that response. So if you say, I hate kids, I said, oh, what a coincidence. Me too. Kids are horrible. Yeah, or you say, oh, that's a pity. Why is that? And you could even spin it further if you wanted to. You have a little tree, but don't get too far into it because in the end, at first it's superficial. If you repeat the topic, you can maybe follow a branch deeper down. This is really preparation. This is not perfection. And uh, the real conversation will definitely differ. Yeah. Yeah, I've been to India and uh, I've met Indians. No worries. I, I understand it's a cultural question, but you don't ask that a German woman. So <laughs> counter reactions. Yeah, you could say, ah, oh, das ist ja interessant, was du nicht sagst. Ah, yeah, okay. Uh -huh. Yeah, it could also be just, uh-huh. Ganz normal. Just what, what would you react with? And as you can see, it might be culturally different, but that is something you figure out the moment you practice this with your partner. Very simple. 
Now, yeah, here you have a topic. My family, how old is your father? My father's 55. Oh, that's young. Yes, I was an accident. That's a very beautiful conversation. Yeah, short. And it doesn't get too deep, as you can see. Yeah, maybe you want to talk about contraception afterwards. Uh, God knows. And uh, the question is whether that can be prepared. You will always go off track, but the preparation does something to you. So what would you do then? Once you have prepared this, like this, you translate everything. The, trans the preparation was in English. Please do yourself the favor. First, see what you want to talk about in English. Yeah, Don't try to do it straight in German. And then translate it with Google or Deepl or actually both to see is there a difference. You learn from this. The learning is not while you do the tandem. The learning actually happens while you... Uh, prepare and then of course there is a confirmation then there is a rejection then there is of course new things that pop up variations of things you didn't think about and uh, that's fine yeah that's coincidental learning but this is the conscious learning and um, yeah and once you have your little dialogue ready and you understand it and you have it in German in front of you you rehearse that and that means you speak it into your computer and ideally you have speechnotes.co open, which is a beautiful software. You switch it to German and it will transcribe everything you say. So the way, this way you get visual feedback uh, whether the software actually recognizes your pronunciation, the things you say. And then after you're done, it takes less than a minute in most cases or two minutes, you have a transcription and then you have your translation and those two you can compare this is very easily done and you can see where you have troubles and those phrases or words you have troubles with you can focus on a little bit google and i think deep as well allow you to play audio like you any text yet that you enter there uh, they will read to you yeah google i'm sure about deep i keep forgetting and my suggestion is to take this seriously to an extent that you imagine this is a job interview level conversation. So it's not a job interview, but the seriosity of this matches that of a job interview. Yeah. And that gives this whole thing a little bit more earnest, earnesty, if that actually exists, that word. Yeah. And once you have rehearsed that a couple of times, I would say for half an hour of speaking, I would easily prepare an hour of different topics or of the same topic and going deeper. You can really, there's no limit to family, right? There's people who talk about nothing else. And then you meet up with your tandem partner and you test all these things. And as it happens so often, preparation is one thing. The real life situation might completely throw you off track. Yeah. But when you then test it, testing and speaking with your tandem partner, just talk for a while with them. You share half of the time you talk in your language, and then you take a little bit of time to analyze how did it go. And the other person will also interact with you. They will react. They will give responses that you haven't thought about. You can take notes of that, by the way. It's okay to take notes, but don't transcribe everything they say. Keep it natural, yeah? Because it's also... This stuff you actually want to get from a native speaker. If you don't have a native speaker and have a learner, that's also fine. But native speakers come up with things you actually don't think about and German learners don't, uh, can't know. Yeah. So something like, na ja, yeah, or da, ne, ne. So this ne is something that throws people off very often. It's something very um, common in, in the region where I come from. 